Dynamic compressors increase the pressure of a gas by using rotating blades to increase the velocity of the gas. Types include centrifugal and axial compressors. The following figure represents a typical assembly drawing of an axial compressor. Axial compressors are used for high flow, low head applications, usually above 100,000 actual cubic feet per minute inlet volume flow. The most common applications for axial compressors are air blowers and gas turbine air compressors. Performance curves for axial compressors indicate the percentage compression ratio as a function of the percentage volume flow. The typical example is now shown on screen. Notice here that the pressure rise from 100% flow to surge flow is always greater than the corresponding pressure rise for a centrifugal compressor. A cross-sectional view of a multi-stage horizontally split centrifugal compressor is seen here. Recall, a centrifugal compressor is also known as radial compressor because the exit flow of the gas from the impeller is radial as opposed to axial. A typical example of a centrifugal compressor performance curve is seen here. The principle of operation of a dynamic compressor always seems more difficult to understand than that of a positive displacement compressor. As seen in a previous video, dynamic compressors increase gas pressure by using rotating blades to increase the velocity of the gas. Now, take a look at the following figure. It shows the upper half of a centrifugal compressor impeller with the side plate removed. In this schematic, the velocity vector u is the blade discharge tip speed. And the velocity vector v sub relative is the discharge gas relative velocity. Simply stated, the characteristic shape of any dynamic performance curve, so rising head versus decreasing flow rate, is a direct result of the relative velocity through the impeller blades. The higher the relative velocity, the less energy input from the impeller blades. And the lower the relative velocity, the greater the energy input from the impeller blades. We will get back to this important concept in a later video and discuss it in further detail. For now, let's get back to our simplified process system. But this time, including a dynamic compressor and apply the same methodology used in the previous video for a positive displacement compressor. We will use the same pressure settings. But the flow rate and horsepower will be larger than that for the positive displacement compressor, since dynamic compressors usually handle inlet flow rates above 5,000 actual cubic feet per minute. For the purpose of illustration, let's assume an inlet volume flow of 20,000 and a brake horsepower of 10,000. Let's now plot the flow versus pressure ratio and the BHP on the appropriate graphs. The pressure ratio is identical to the previous example since the suction and discharge pressures did not change. This pressure ratio is equal to 4.45. As a result, the first operating points corresponding to these conditions are plotted as follows. Now, let's assume again that the control valve downstream the compressor is throttled. This action causes the compressor discharge pressure to rise to 180 psi, thus increasing the pressure ratio. The horsepower, however, decreases to 6000. In a dynamic compressor, increasing the pressure ratio would result in a lower compressor flow rate since the only way a dynamic compressor can develop a high pressure ratio is at a lower gas velocity or at a lower flow rate. Simply stated, the longer the gas is in contact with the energy producer, which is the blades, the higher the pressure ratio for a dynamic compressor. This means the flow rate must decrease. In order to see this on the graph, we need first to calculate the new pressure ratio. Recall that the pressure ratio is equal to the discharge pressure divided by the suction pressure. Both pressures must be expressed in absolute terms. In our case, the new pressure ratio is as follows. It is equal to 5.61. The new operating points, flow versus pressure ratio, and BHP, are now plotted on the appropriate graphs. By observing these two curves, the characteristics of any dynamic compressor become obvious.
Dynamic compressors deliver variable volume flow. They have a fixed head capacity and are self-limiting, as opposed to positive displacement compressors. The following figure summarizes the characteristics of positive displacement and dynamic compressors by presenting their typical performance curves. Keep in mind that positive displacement compressors are not self-limiting. This means that the pressure ratio will continue to rise until the compressor case pressure is exceeded, which may constitute a serious safety hazard and lead to a catastrophic failure. For this reason, positive displacement compressors are usually protected by a pressure relief device. Depending on the gas being handled, the pressure relief device could be a pressure relief valve, a safety valve, or a rupture disc. On the other hand, because dynamic compressors are self-limiting, they do not require a pressure relief device for their protection. Their performance curves, as depicted here, show a decreasing pressure with increasing inlet volume flow.